Hello again, this is UML Operator. Okay, in this session, we're gonna be talking about the toolbox. Everything about the toolbox. Well, maybe not everything, but enough to get us started in using the toolbox effectively. Just like in many of the other videos that you may have watched, we're gonna to go to the Start tab, we're gonna to go to Help, and we're gonna select Open Help. And as soon as we do that, we're gonna to come to the Spark Systems Welcome page. In the Spark System Welcome page, we're gonna to go to the Application Desktop. We're gonna to go to Customize the Desktop. We're gonna scroll down here till we find Diagram Toolbox. And let's go ahead and launch the See Also column of Diagram Toolbox. And this is what we're gonna step through in this session. All right, we started in the default layout and how you can get back to that is go to workspace and just click on default and it's gonna load the factory default layout, which does not have toolbox in it. And so what we're gonna do is we're going to, we can go to design and we can click toolbox to get it this way. We can go to design tab, click the toolbox this way and bring it in. And there's actually a third way. Let's go ahead and show you. I'm gonna close the toolbox. I have no toolbox. And in that help screen that I told you to go to, it tells you control, shift, and the number three. Look at that, the toolbox is there. Now, I usually don't get into the shortcuts until later sessions, but there are a lot of shortcuts that Sparks gives you that you can exercise from your keyboard. You can also exercise vo via voice commands, natural language processing, where I talk to my Sparks or my other tooling, and I tell it the tooling to do things, and it does it for me, but that's gonna be a much later session. Now, as I have shown you in previous videos of customizing your workspace, you can drag your windows in your workspace anywhere you want. So you see these little icons pop up. I want it to the left of browser and I can pin it, unpin it. You know, now it's gonna pop out for me. I can, you know, make it locked out so it's out there. You can put this any way you, where you want. You wanna drag it over to the right side. You want it to the right of everything. You want to pin it so that it pops out for you. You're, you're able to do that in Sparks. However, I like the toolbox always visible for me and I like it over on the left side of my screen, all right? So this is not my configuration. My configuration, we're gonna have quick access. I've shown you this before. I have a common layout, I'm gonna go with it. And you're going to see as soon as this loads, the toolbox is over on the left, the browser is over on the right, and I have notes in the lower right. And I can change window sizes and settings from there. My work area is in the middle, and we're able to start doing business immediately as soon as we bring up Sparks. Once you configure your workspace, it's available to you in every new project, existing project, that you use going forward. All right, so let's start talking about the toolbox. So the toolbox is set up in sections. So each toolbox is configured by whoever built the toolbox, in this case, Sparks, to represent a particular diagram exercise. So this is a class diagram. This is not a class diagram. It is a project management diagram. This is a requirements diagram. And you can see that these tools that are available to you in your tool belt, I love saying that, are set for modeling, diagramming, using a specific approach, whether it's UML, OMG UML, or whether it's TOGAF's Archimate, and I could go on and on. So the tools are configured to the diagram type that you're on. So you'll notice that as soon as I go here, I've got a class diagram. I'm gonna right, I'm gonna left click in the diagram. Of course, this is blank. And it goes to the tools for that. I'm gonna go to ideation. And it immediately goes to the toolbox, the tools for that specific type of diagram. So as soon as I go to class diagram, pops up. As soon as I go to project management diagram, pops up. If I go to Requirements diagram, I get the tools over in the toolbox. 
So we're going to go back here and we're going to jump into the next subject. In the toolbox, each one of the sections, if you right click in here, you can hide labels. So if I right click in here, I can hide labels. If I go to the next one, I right click in it, I can hide labels, right? And you can do that for all of them, right? So unless you know what each one of these icons are, I wouldn't recommend hiding labels. But if you get to a point where you understand each one of these tools in the toolbox, especially the initial one. When I'm in a class diagram, I only have to remember these seven, right? Associations, I do that within the modeling environment. Every once in a while, I might come over here and grab an association. I know what these icons represent in UML. As far as the others, not so much. You know, I don't remember what all of these icons are and I need them, to, well, these I do. But some of these other icons, most of them I do, like text box, legend, etc. But you're going to learn this later on. I digress. So you're able to hide labels, right? All right, so I'm going to show labels. I need those up. All right, so you remember in a previous session when we were talking about the specialized tab, you had technologies, managed technologies, you can turn on and off technologies, right? So I'm going to turn back on all of them. And now it's configuring for all technologies. When I go to this drop down menu, I get lots of choices. I mean, it's overwhelming sometimes. So you're going to learn that when you're configuring your technologies or your model admin is configuring technologies, they can come in here and pick and choose none or of course, just a couple to get the team started. Maybe you're working on Amazon cloud cert web services. Let's see here. Maybe you're working on BPMN business process modeling notation, and uh, maybe you're responsible for your communication side and you're doing your ubiquitous language around glossary and terms. So the team is aligned. And I do a lot of wireframing and user experience modeling. So you just have those. Now, spinning circle means that Sparks is configuring and setting up my work area. When I go to this, now I have a smaller amount of tools to choose from. So if I go to user interface, I have a toolbox ready to be used in whatever diagram. If I go and want to bring in another diagram, I have smaller amount of choices to select from in what kind of diagram and the tooling that I need. So let me close this. We're going to cancel out. We're going to go back to the toolbox that we were originally using, which was class. Another way to do that is simply launch go outside the diagram, go back to it, go back to it. There we go. And it brings up the default diagram originally set for the diagram type that you had chosen. So the menu allows you to very quickly go to other tools. You want to go to state, state machines, but I'm still in a class diagram type. Sparks allows you to go and move between various tools in order to complete the job that you want in a particular model. So a model can have lots of different technologies applied to it in order to show your stakeholders complete analysis and other communications within a single diagram. And we're going to show you that in other sessions, but that's extremely useful when you're doing model-driven development, model-driven architecture. All right, let me reset. We're going to go launch our project again. Just cleans things up, gets us back to our default page, default toolbox for the page that we're on. Okay, so you can use the search capability to look for specific elements, right? Within the toolbox that you're in, right? So that's extremely useful, um, especially if you're hiding elements. But, you know, this can be extremely useful, very quick access just by going and say, hey, you know, I want to look for 
object. Well, it's not in this diagram, all right? I wanna look for interface, anything that has to do with interfaces. There you go. So you can start to filter, you know, a toolbox that has a lot going on in it <laughs> very quickly just using this search box right here. This next magnifying glass here is very useful. I'm gonna go ahead and select it. And I'm able to, it brings up this fine toolbox item. It has all of the tools that are currently available to you. So if you were looking for a class element here across all of these tools, there's class elements in Argus, there you go. There's class elements in code engineering, there you go. And I could go on and on, right? GML, there you go. So you can find the notion of, and this is the one we're on, you can find the notion of a class element or a class toolbox, I should say, within this find toolbox item. Because sometimes you wanna use a toolbox that's using classes. And when we get into more of object-oriented development, object-oriented architecture, you, you get into generalization and all that fun stuff, we use class elements. We do not use objects, all right? It can very quickly help you find the tooling via the technologies that you're interested in applying in your model-driven exercise. And just like you can do over here in this menu icon when you're looking for a particular tooling, when you're in the Find Toolbox and you find the diagram type that you're looking for for the element that you're looking for, you can activate the toolbox, right? So I can activate, it goes right to it. So now I have all the toolbox for code engineering for the software language C Sharp, right? And I, I program in Python, so I can go here, hey, there's class element, I wanna activate it. There we go, code engineering for Python. You have all the tools that you can use in your model-driven development, model-driven architecture uh, exercises. And then you can choose items in here very quickly, and you can uh, add the diagram. So I'm on this diagram, I wanna add a class element, I simply select that, and I'm gonna close. There's a, a class element that came out of the Python toolbox. Now. If I double click on this, this is a class element, regardless of whether I'm in this toolbox or I'm in the original UML 1X toolbox right here, right? So same class diagram, but I'm just showing you how you can bring in a diagram using the fine toolbox, bring in an interface, there we go very quickly because you can find a technology, you can find an implementation, you can do cross technology within your models using the toolbox, and you can apply elements that are relevant to the subject or the area that you're working on. One of the things that I do quite a bit is I, you look for wire, I use, I do wireframe development, right? Uh, user experience UX, but I might be in a class diagram, a logical diagram, a process diagram, and I simply want to bring in a web page. <laughs> so, you know, I can go, go to it, bring it in, and boom, I have a wireframe for a web page. So, very useful. Play around with it, have some fun. Now, I've messed up my cover page here. These are the three elements we just added. So, hold down the shift, select these three, right click in here, delete selected items. Yes, I do want to delete. Yes, for all, and they're gone, and we're back to normal. Let's recap. So in this session, we showed you the three ways to bring up the toolbox. You know, you can go to Design, Toolbox, you can go to Design tab, Toolbox, and you can hit Control, Shift, and then number three, and it brings up the toolbox. Control, Shift, the number three brings up the toolbox. And it brings up the toolbox in the place that your workspace was configured for. So if you have it on the right, it's gonna pop up there. If you have it anywhere else, it's gonna pop up for you there when you hit Control, Shift, and three, or you use these other two approaches. All right, so the next thing we talked about was the search bar. Your ability to very quickly find elements, 
that you want to use out of the current toolbox. And you know, if you want to hit X, it clears it, brings it back. We showed you the ability to use the find toolbox item to find specific things that you are interested in. Maybe your project manager, I need to find things that deal with project management, right? So there's the notion of project management across all of these technologies and very quickly add, activate the toolbox. So now once you found what the tools that you needed, you can activate them. So we go here, I don't know, project milestone, activate. There you go. It goes right to it within the UAF uh, toolbox and get, get you right to the elements you're looking for. You want to add this item to your diagram that you're working on. You just simply select that diagram, add the diagram, whatever diagram you're on, make sure you're on the diagram you want and it puts it there. And uh, what else do we cover? I think I cover, we covered the hamburger menu. We covered the ability to place your toolbox. We covered the ability that if you want to hide or show the toolbox, lots of things that you can do around the toolbox, but the toolbox is your buddy. I mean, you need the right tools for the right jobs. All right. So the toolbox, very useful, lots of different ways to get to it. I hope this video session has helped you. A lot of people get lost in the toolbox. They lose their toolbox. They don't know how to get the toolbox back. Lots of different problems. So now you should be an expert on Sparks Enterprise Architect Toolbox. And one other thing, the toolbox is different than a toolbar, all right? There's toolbars all over the place. And in my videos, I'm probably going to call the toolbox a toolbar. Hopefully I never call a toolbar a toolbox, but uh, there is a difference in our uh, nomenclature, in our language when we're talking about Sparks Enterprise Architect, the difference between a toolbox and a toolbar. Thanks very much for watching and I'll talk to y'all later.